So, what makes a piece of clothing ugly? Well, ugly is subjective as we all know, so it probably depends on who you ask. Like for example, which of these two shoes is ugly? Depending on who you ask and who asks, everyone's gonna have a different answer. Except for maybe the 20 people that I asked that all have the same answer. But who knows, man, this could all just be a coincidence. But no, I think we can all agree when something is ugly, bro. Let's just be honest here. We like a big ass angry bird. And also, I don't think ugly has to be synonymous with unwanted. We can think things are ugly, but then still have an attraction to them. These are kind of ugly. These right here, this technological breakthrough in footwear, the five finger shoes, I think these are ugly as hell. These are ugly. We all know what pretty privilege is, right? You know, like when someone's attractive, they get treated differently. And in most cases, that treatment might be advantageous. And with that being said, if the ugly ass five finger shoes were a person, I would probably reverse pretty privilege them. Whatever that means. But even though she's a little ugly, at least she's mine. Look at these bad boys right here. Ugly as hell, baby, look at that. And I ain't got no socks on, so the vibe is even crazier knowing that I'm barefoot in that thing. Look at this toe spread right here, isn't that crazy? That's disgusting. This is stank. It's like the Margella Tabbies right here, but instead of it just being a tag team, it's a whole starting five. Now, I'm gonna show you again just to violate your time. Look at this toe spread right here. This is so ugly. I could put stuff in between my toes, which you probably don't wanna see. Here's a clip of me putting stuff in between my toes Bonus clip of me picking stuff up off the floor. And you know, man, as stinky and as ugly and disgusting as this is, you gotta admit, this is at least a little cool. Like I said, it's ugly and it's disgusting, but it's kind of cool. And sometimes, not just clothes, things in general just kind of have to be ugly before they can be cool. Like AirPods, for example. Remember AirPods when these were announced? How much we was making fun of people wearing AirPods and how they look silly? Now they're a school supply, bro. Fanny packs too. Fanny packs were like, oh, that's such a dad thing. That's such a tourist thing. Why are people buying $1,000 Prada fanny packs? I thought they were ugly. I thought they were ugly. Standing desks, look at this. I feel like this was a workplace ick, you know? But times have changed, man. Now, this is a status symbol of productivity. I have three of them in my office. Okay, hold up though. But I don't use them because of all the health benefits and how standing up fixes your posture or whatever. All this bull crap, I don't listen to that. The reason I have standing desks is because I work really hard in the morning to put this fresh fit on, right? And I didn't put this all on just to go to a desk and sit down. Because if you look at this diagram that I've assembled right here, when you sit down, you lose 80% of your fit. Isn't this crazy? This is what they don't want you to know. This amount of drip waste is gonna put a hole in the ozone at some point. This is why I stand up, and now I don't gotta worry about this drip waste thanks to the sponsor of this video, Flexi Spot, which I am very grateful for getting my office up to speed with these desks right here. Even this one right here, this one with wheels is a standing desk. This one, this one's massive. This one's a boat. This one's a standing desk. And even when we're feeling lazy, they supplied us with these ergonomic office chairs. And what's crazy is as ridiculous as all the tech is on these desks, all of that stuff and the build was only five steps long. Look at these right here. This is a PDF of the actual instruction manual for my desk. There were only five steps. And you might be thinking, right? Look at this desk. There's no way that's five steps, bro. Look at that. Oh my God, that's my handyman, bro. I'm going to jail. Sturdy. That desk is not moving, bro. This desk is not moving. I don't care how many times you die in League of Legends. Nothing's gonna break this desk. It's honestly been a blessing with how easy and effective everything was working with FlexiSpot. And right now they're having their Labor Day sale and a lot of the desks they have up there are on sale up to $100 off. My personal desk is this one, the Q8. But the E7 is also a very popular, amazing desk. We got this one on wheels right here. And you can get an extra $30 off your order of $500 or more with my code YTB30. I'll put it up on screen right here, bam. Them, baby. They have a wide array of desks and chairs to choose from, so go on the website right now and check it out at flexispot.com. Everything is in the description, and I'm very thankful for them sponsoring today's video. Thank you, Flexispot, for sponsoring today's video. But like I was saying, with all the ugly stuff, right, I don't necessarily think everything that got popular can't still be ugly. Let's take a look at one of the biggest shoes of the past year, the Solomons. I'll admit, these are very cool. They're different, they're colorful. They got a unique vibe going on. They're so ugly that they're cute, you know? It's very special, but they're still ugly. Maybe in a fit where there are a bunch of ugly pieces, they might look cool, but that does not cancel out the fact that these are ugly. 
it just reframes it. And this right here, when there's a bunch of ugly things that come together to form something cool, that is a social phenomenon called group attractiveness, AKA the cheerleader effect. And this is a real thing, man. You can go look this up. This was a study done to show that people are perceived to be more attractive when in a group setting, as opposed to isolated individually. So in the study, scientists showed people pictures of groups. They were then asked to rate each individual person in that picture based on attractiveness. And then later, they were then given isolated photos of those people in that group photo, and then were then asked to rate them separated on a picture by themselves. And obviously you know where this is going. On average, everyone was rated higher when they were seen in a group setting. And if you think about it, that is kind of how a lot of today's most popular styles kind of work. We got a bunch of cheerleader effect ass fits over here. People in fashion like to call them uniform styles, like Rick Owens, for example. What is this? By itself, right, in a vacuum, what is this right here? But then when you put everything into a wardrobe system, it makes a lot of sense. And to demonstrate this, I set up a game for you to kind of understand how this will work. I'm gonna flash you some clothes on screen, one by one, just individual pieces. I'm gonna let you smell the ugly from these pieces, you know, just get a good whiff. And then after that, I'm gonna cook all the pieces and then we'll see how the fit of everything compares to the individual ingredients. All right, so let's get this first one right here. Boom, a pair of Sambas with some, with some ugly ass union worker OSHA approved laces on them. You can see these from space. And then next we got some country club Argyle pattern ass denim right here. Next up we got Mr. Incredible's collared shirt before they lifted the ban on superheroes. And then finally to confuse us and just throw the whole vibe off, we got ski gloves to make us wonder where this guy is going. What temperature is it? It's all the temperatures. All right, anyways, individually, right? I'm just gonna keep flashing the pieces one by one. Individually, how is this gonna make sense? We are totally ugged out right now. I'm gonna just kind of let you vision what the fit might be, all right? Okay, cheerleader effect time. Now, in context, with all the ugly pieces forming Voltron, personally, I don't think the fit is that bad. I kind of like it. I feel like everything makes sense. Personally, I don't think it's something that I would wear, but it might be something that ASAP Rocky might wear, all right? See, this game is funny because it kind of makes you think, what do you really know about fashion? Did you know how those pieces were gonna work together? Okay, let's do another one, all right? First piece on screen, upper middle class immigrant dad loafers, classic. And then next we got a pair of Minecraft HD texture pack ass jeans right here. Continuing the theme of upper middle class immigrant, we got the upper middle class immigrant mom bag. And then the last piece on screen, we got this very interesting boxy. Personally, it reminds me of Chex Mix, like the really crispy brown square one, the boxy Chex Mix blazer. All right, I'm just gonna let this, the pieces flash on screen real quick so you can kind of figure out what the vibe is here. There's a lot of ugly, individually, these pieces, we got a couple uglies, but when you pair everything together, again, it's just ASAP Rocky. Does this make any sense? I actually really like the fit. I think it's really well composed. Also, everything is Gucci. But I, the real thing is, like, do is ASAP Rock? It makes you think, right? What do you really know about fashion? Okay, now, this will be the last fit right here. And you might honestly recognize this one once I start breaking it down, all right? So, this is an iconic fit. Starting off with, we got some heels right here, baby. This is a shade of purple that you will only find in a 64 pack of crayons, bro. This is not a shade of purple that exists in nature. Rare as fuck, all right? Next, we got this orange pair of shorts that should really only be on a 24 hour fitness pickup basketball demon. Next up, we got this sheer top looking like a screen door to this two piece she got on. And lastly, we got this cute yellow bag that definitely got a bunch of gum wrappers inside. All right, so I'm gonna let the pieces flash again so you can kind of possibly get a vibe of what this might even look like. Okay, so individually, right? This is definitely acquired taste. Where do you acquire this taste? I don't fucking know. But together, right, as the fit, this was a cultural reset for everybody. I'm pretty sure everyone updated their iOS after seeing this outfit. This is the, uh, the Apollo moon landing equivalent of today's ugly style resurgence. And now, obviously, like you're seeing here, and maybe even the last two fits, this cheerleader effect idea 
it doesn't necessarily work every time, right? And I mean, even the study right here showed that it's only like 2% effective, which is kind of bullshit. So I was like, are we just placeboing ourselves? Because think about it. What does 2% even really equate to? If you were 2% uglier, what does that even do for you? Does that even, that doesn't really make that much of a, like if something is 2% off, right? That is a spit in the face. So why though? Why does it feel like right now ugly is at an all time high? Well, even though the cheerleader effect is only 2% effective, I think there's some weight there when it comes to fashion in terms of fit composition. I think as fashion has gotten more mainstream and acceptable, we're seeing the norm surpass just the usual formula of cool statement piece plus a bunch of neutral passable stuff to just kind of lay a foundation and support this one thing. Now, I feel like it's way more common and interesting to invest in a true wardrobe system wardrobe systems where every piece makes each piece excel and vice versa. So why is this good for ugly stuff? Well, because ugly flourishes better in a system as opposed to when it's isolated in a sea of mediocrity. And I think it's pretty safe to say that a lot of people think this dad genre of shoe is pretty ugly. You know, we thought that with the 990s when those were popping off six years ago. And of course now, there are so many uglier variants of this archetype with obviously the Salmons being the biggest breakthrough as of recent. And I think across the spectrum, it works all the same to varying degrees. For example, like if you just throw this on with your safe, neutral, plain Cheerios ass wardrobe, chances are they're gonna look ugly. They're gonna make your other pieces look ugly. You're gonna look ugly. But like I was talking about wardrobe systems, in the right system, these pieces can look better and more in place than all your other universally attractive pieces. You might be thinking, Christian, isn't this just proper styling? Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, that's always been true. That's never not true. But I didn't want to give the boring ass friends we made along the way answer of, well, nothing's ugly if it's styled right. Because one, that's a what fuck Captain America ass answer is that's not going to help anyone. And also, I think there are ugly clothes. There are like, I know the term ugly is subjective, but objectively, there are ugly clothes, respectfully, objectively. There are a lot of ugly clothes, but there are beautiful fits composed of ugly pieces. And there are ugly fits composed of beautiful pieces. And obviously there are ugly fits composed of ugly pieces. And there's also, there's also just ugly right here. Bam. All of these things can be true. But the takeaway from this should be that there are so many ways to make things work. From all the examples I showed you earlier, from the game we played earlier, where you don't even really know what's going on with fashion until it comes out and you're just like, wow, I don't know anything. Shit can be ugly, dog. But if it looks good, it's not ugly. That doesn't make any sense. But you know what I'm saying.